Welcome back. Uh, as uh, we said earlier that we are going to tackle the role of women in the African countries and how to let, to let her uh, share more in the political uh, life as uh, uh, the African Union Summit was held in Ethiopia in the past uh, few years under the theme of uh, Women's uh, Empowerment Year. So to uh, shed more light uh, on uh, this issue, I'm delighted to be joined here in the studio with the president of the Zimbabwe Senate, uh, Edna Madzongwe. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Mrs. Edna. Now, first of all, uh, during the recent meetings of the African Union in Addis Ababa, uh, the participants declared 2015 as the year of empowering African women. And there were several statements made uh, during uh, the, that meeting, uh, the first of which, for example, is uh, that uh, Commissar uh, Business Chairwoman uh, Mrs. Uh, Amani Asfour uh, announced that uh, Egypt will be hosting in April um, a conference for women, for the empowerment uh, of women. So let me uh, ask you, how do you see, how do you see 2015 for African women in the beginning? Thank you. 2015 is a good year for, for the African woman, particularly that um, in Addis Ababa, it was declared in the African Union that 2015 is the year of the women and children's advancement. Mm -hmm. uh, so we look forward particularly to this upcoming conference, um, which is going to be held here, because it will look into ways of funding the projects for the African woman so that we also benefit from the economy of our countries. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, African women, as well as the Ar Arab women, have really been oppressed because of our traditions yes. and cultures. And so having a whole year declared that we are, it's going to look into the issues of promoting women is a very welcome stand. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us about the reason uh, behind the visit to Egypt? Yes. Uh, Zimbabwe is a member of ASECA, that is the Association of Shurers and Senates in, the Af in Africa and the Arab world. Mm. So there was a conference of the women department or women wing of that political organization. Mm. It's, a, it's a parliamentary organization where all the members uh, members of the Senate in their particular countries. Uh, were you discussing issues related to women in this conference? Very much so. Mm -hmm. we, we, we examined particularly how w we can share good ideas between the African women and the Arab women. Uh, we're looking at issues of health. We looked at issues of women empowerment. Mm. How best can we empower women? who have been disadvantaged for so long, for so many centuries. Okay. You yeah. said that uh, you were looking for ways to discuss the issues facing women, Arab women and African women. So this mm -hmm. makes me ask you, do you think that the issues facing women or the problems facing women are almost the same worldwide or they're different according to the region? Basically, I would say history-wise, mm. they are the same. Mm. Because women throughout the world have been oppressed in as far as um, the economy is concerned, in as far as politics is concerned, and socially because of our different uh, cultural beliefs and backgrounds. Mm. But at the current time, you will see that you will find that some countries have quite improved on, um, on the women's issues. and other countries are lagging a bit behind. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are working, it's a long journey. But the issues but such as violence against women, for example, yeah. are, are the same worldwide. And uh, the Arab League hosted uh, a very important uh, conference uh, two days ago in this regard. Did you get a chance to attend it? I was, well, we were involved in this other um, conference, mm -hmm. but we talked about it. Yes. We talked about uh, violence against women. That's the other issue which is universal. Mm. 
mm. you will find that uh, it doesn't matter on which continent the women are, mm. we are subjected to violence, mm -hmm. physical violence. So how different uh, are the problems uh, facing uh, women in urban areas from uh, those in underdeveloped ones? Uh, they are different in that the woman in the urban area depends on being employed yes. or having the husband employed. And so when the country is undergoing unemployment, the woman in the urban area suffers a lot to support her family. The rural area woman has a different problem yes. in that, yes, maybe they, they work the fields and have food to feed the children, but will not have the money to send the children to school. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Mrs. Edna, African women ha have achieved a lot uh, in order to reach decision-making posts. For example, uh, Liberia, they have the first uh, female president, uh, Ellen Johnson, to leave. Yes. And you yourself, you are the, uh, the president of uh, the Senate in yes. Zimbabwe. Yes. So we have honorable uh, examples if we talk about uh, African women in leadership positions or in uh, post-making decision, uh, in, in decision making uh, posts. So do, how do you see this in Egypt in particular? Because we're looking forward to the upcoming parliamentary elections. And we're looking forward to more representation by uh, uh, Egyptian women in, in Parliament. Thank you for um, touching on that political subject. I'm hoping that the women, when you have your elections, the Egyptian w women will see it fit to support women candidates so that we have more women in the parliament here. Actually, we do have this. We started what an initiative called Women for Women. So women are helping other women who are running uh, for, for the elections by yes. supporting them, by trying to fund them, by giving them all kinds of support. That's commendable. Mm -hmm. And I hope you, your percentages go higher than what you have right now. Mm -hmm. um, in, in Africa in particular, particularly those countries which had to fight to become independent from the colonial countries, it has been easy for the women to demand that we be part of the government. Mm -hmm. Because when we're fighting for independence, we worked alongside the men. And it was only fair for us to also demand our positions exactly. when our countries became free. We're doing the same here in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing the same here. In I Egypt. wish you luck. <laughs> so, uh, in your country, how many seats are reserved for women in parliament? My country has two houses the National Assembly yes. and the Senate. Uh, we also operated on a new constitution in 2013 yes. when we had our elections. And in that new constitution, it makes way for 60 positions to be held by women in, the, in the lower, yes, 60 yes. in the lower house. Uh, the lower house has a total of 210 seats. So 28 were won on the first past the, the goal, mm. plus the 60 which come in as uh, special consent according to our constitution that finds us with uh, 80, 86 which in the upper in the upper in the lower house then makes a total of about 32 okay. percent of the members of parliament the senate has a total of 80 members of the senate and we have for 38 members, women. Do you think women, it's a good representation? Which is, yeah, it is. That's roughly about 47.5%. So this is enough. You think it's good? Uh, well, you don't need more. Uh, we You're need asking more for more representation? Women make up 52% of the population. In Zimbabwe? So, yes. It's almost 
uh, internationally. Women mm. are more than men. Yes. yes. Our population is higher. And so we are saying 50 50. Yes, 50 50. You know, <laughs> we are working towards that. Okay. In our 2018 elections, we'll be aiming for that. Okay. Uh, uh, you touched on a very important subject, which is uh, the, the issues facing women worldwide are global or universal. And one of these issues or problems uh, hindering the development of women is education. How do you see education in Africa and how would promoting education and helping in uh, upgrading the level of education of girls in the African continent, how would that change 